Yay! Woo! Yeah! Hoo! We hit 50,000 subscribers. Thank you, thank you very much, everybody. Let's get another round of applause here. You all did it, you did it, I did it, we all did it. We're the same, we're the community. Thank you so much for this wonderful feat. It only took us four years, but we're here. We're finally here. And thank you so much for this. It really does mean a lot. I haven't done any of these personal videos. And right now, this video is, by the way, brought to you by my high definition face because I got a new camera and it's wonderful. I also wanted to announce that we now have Discord. And so now you can communicate with me on Discord. I'll be there on a server, that server that's down in the description below. So please do check it out. I could end the video here, but I actually wanted to talk about my journey as an educator on YouTube for the last four years. There's a couple of things I've picked up, both from a learning perspective as well as a teaching perspective. And I think some of that could help some of you all out there who are looking to either learn yourself or teach and expand your knowledge to the other world for people to understand and learn. So I started my YouTube journey and the better for the better part of like four years ago during grad school. And the main intention was to learn whatever I was learning in grad school. And the best way to do that is to teach yourself. And so you saw all of my videos like on kernels, on SVMs and everything like linear regression that was super mathematical. It's because I was kind of learning for, for like exams, right? At some point though, um, some people did enjoy that and my audience grew. I was kind of looking only to teach as a motive to learn, which I encourage everybody to do. Um, but it came to a point where, you know, some of these videos became so mathematical, like that kernel and SVM video, where people said that they were more deterred from learning concepts because of how difficult these, these concepts were presented. And that kind of made me feel a little bad about uh, just the way that I was presenting information. And I thought, well, on one end, I need to present information in a way that people can understand. And on the other end, I also have to make sure that it's technical enough to be useful for me when I'm learning for, for tests in school, for example. And the best way to do the best of both worlds is probably the Feynman technique. The Feynman technique is pretty simple. So essentially it's used to learn any concept. So you take a sheet of paper, you write down the entire concept as an explanation, try to remove any jargon as you are doing it until you are left with just layman words. And if you are able to explicitly explain the entire concept with just key layman terms, then you're good to go. That shows that you've understood it pretty well. If you are not, well, that just shows that you're probably hiding behind the jargon and you might not understand what those terms in the jargon actually mean. Now, I have seen this as a great learning tool, but for teaching, it can be a little incomplete. Essentially, that kind of segues into my second part of this video, which shows, okay, what can you do to teach instead of just learn? You might have seen those videos by Wired where there is essentially like, we're gonna explain this concept at five different levels and they explain it from, you know, to children and also to working professionals, some, some really complex concepts like quantum mechanics or the blockchain or something. But in doing so, you inadvertently leave out certain details when you're explaining it to like kids, for example, as opposed to professionals. Now, I guess this is okay since you are dealing with children and children may not digest all of that information. But when you're dealing with adults, it becomes pretty tricky and pretty different. The way I like to think about um, the difficulties of teaching is that there are two main levels that you need to be concerned with. One is the level of the concept you are teaching and the other is the level of the audience to whom you are teaching. The more different that these two levels are, the more difficult it will be to teach these concepts. So for example, teaching calculus to an 11th grader is easier than teaching calculus to a fifth grader without losing any details. Because if you are teaching to 11th grader, they have some background knowledge that you could use. Well, as opposed to teaching to a fifth grader, if you only know like multiplication, getting your hands, getting your head around something, some abstract concept like calculus is pretty tough. In traditional learning, like in school, right? Let's say I'm a fourth grade teacher. 
I, my students are third graders, right? So the level of my teaching is fourth grade level. The level of students in my audience is third grade level. And so there's like a difference of one, which is not too hard to overcome. So it's not too difficult to teach. Same with fifth grade. If I was a fifth grade teacher, my students are fourth graders. They have the level of fourth graders. The difference in traditional schooling is still one. And that it remains pretty consistent throughout um, schooling, whether you're in elementary school or high school or college. But when it gets to the online world and the world of online learning, things become a little muddy. So deep learning, machine learning, artificial intelligence, pretty high level, pretty abstract concepts. So they're pretty high level concepts. But the level of my audience is all over the place. Some of you are like new perfect. Some of you are working professionals. Like, you know, your th you know, your thing. But then there are others who are really trying to just get into the field. Because of such variability, teaching concepts can be pretty challenging. And not only is there a vertical difference, but there's also a horizontal difference too. Some of you are engineers, some of you are statisticians and mathematicians, other of you, other of you have like other backgrounds. And because like there is this little multi-dimensional space, ooh, I'm bringing math into this, this too. Where have we come? Because of there is this multi-dimensional space of my audience here, just teaching concepts becomes all the more challenging. And even though it is challenging though, it can still be pretty fun to play around with. And because of this multi-dimensional understanding of my audience, I've come up with certain techniques to, to kind of teach um, certain concepts, right? One of them is the multi-pass explanations that I introduced a while ago. So for example, in my video on, I believe, BERT, I went through explaining a complex architecture and just digging into details in multiple passes. So I start first with like a high level overview, front to end, just finish off the explanation. And then in pass two, get into more details in each process. And then in pass three, get into even more details. This way, like people of different vertical levels of understanding, like from novices to professionals, they, they at least feel like they've understood something and they feel like the video was kind of for them. And in order to tackle the horizontal, um, the horizontal differences that everybody has in background, I used to put something called like the math hats and the tech hats, where sometimes I would give a more mathematical explanation to certain concepts. And then also, you know, for the next pass, I would give a more technical explanation like I have done in my um, videos on generative modeling. They were pretty fun. If you have also been following me for some time, not everybody really loves super high def technical explanations too. So I try to try to, you know, address it with some comedy, kind of like I have been doing for, you know, some some of the optimizer videos where, oh, there's a hiker just trying to climb down a hill. And so if I introduce a human element as an optimizer, you can you can kind of identify with their struggles as they climb down a hill. It's just me trying to figure out new ways to explain these more abstract technical concepts that, you know, would require a lot of mathematics in general. You know, I've actually introduced everything what I just talked about now from the multi-pass explanation to the um, different type pass explanation for addressing different backgrounds in, in starting from a video where I started introducing dark and black backgrounds. And I think that was like from boosting and transforming neural networks. So you'll see like my first set of videos will just be white backgrounds and then all of a sudden they're black. That was intentional just to show that, hey, this is the new me, this is the new way I teach. And these are the videos I'm extremely proud of because I am putting in um, effort on a teacher's perspective rather than from a student's perspective of teaching. That sentence made sense rewind it and listen to it again. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. And also, I'm going to remind you again, please do join that Discord link in the description below. I will definitely be more active on the Discord. It's going to be a lot easier for me to manage messages there. So please do join the community. If you're here, thank you so much for watching to the end. Please give it a like, subscribe, and I will see you super soon with another fun video. Take it easy. Bye.